Welcome to this rebroadcast of an interview with Chris Shea, founder of Life's Journey Life Coaching. Learn more about Chris Shea by visiting his website, www.lifesjourneyblog.com. And very often our partners will want to apologize or want to change gears and we'll hear, and I'm sorry, and the first thing we think is, you're just wanting to shut me up. You're not really meaning it. So if a couple is prone to losing their temper with each other, what can you guys offer to help them learn another way? When I have couples come see me, I usually get some background information from them. Um, what their anger has done in the, in the relationship for one, what they were raised with, what parenting, who raised them and what they did with anger, especially if you have a passive parent and an aggravation one. Uh, but then also um, find out if they've been in, in, the, uh, in, grow, in trouble with the law, if they've had any problems. And then I teach them how to take a time out. And I tell them this is a skill that they can use for their whole family. Because again, they're going to get frustrated with the children. The children are going to get frustrated with them. They can call a timeout. But what you want to do is remember to stay when you feel your body start to get out of control. And you know that, oh, I'm not going to go there today. I, I, I am worth more than going into the, the jail system. Or I'm worth more than making the other person mad. Or so we take a timeout at least 15 minutes. We usually put the sign up which if the other person is ranting and raving, they can see it. Um, and then we take 15 minutes if it means I go outside and sit on the porch. If I mean I just go in the bedroom, the other one does not chase them down, leaves them alone. The adrenaline then goes back down. When we come back, we attempt to talk about the topic again. And if, it, if it's still is too hot, we take another time out and maybe take an hour in between. And the third time, if it doesn't work, we table it for 24. That doesn't mean we just let it be and stay in festering, but we agree to disagree. And then we come back in and we talk about, okay, what is the problem? Well, we've got too hard headed. What are we really wanting done and get to the goal? Well, mom always, no, you're not mom and he's not dad. So we're trying to figure out where they're coming up with their biases. And then I explain to them the domestic violence law for state of Tennessee. But you can have those rights, you can get out of control, but anybody can hear you out of control. Anybody can call the law and anybody's going down. It doesn't mean that you're the worst one. You're the, whoever's out of control, and I've seen them take a whole family. They took dad, mom went, then they took all three kids because mom jumped on the cops, children jumped on the cops, they took them all away. And the main thing is to get the out of control to stop. I've spent a lot of my professional life trying to figure out why it is that someone so quickly can go from cozy to crazy, but it takes a lot longer. And I'd like everybody listening to this, including you guys, to imagine being an upset with a partner. And suddenly that partner flashes something to you that says, this feels awful. Can we start again and really listen to each other? Listen in your heart what happens when you get a written message how it changes the energy and can get you back at least on the track from crazy to cozy. Why is that? I'm going to give you another one. I love you. I hate fighting. Can't we just hug? What's happened? I have shown my partner some goodwill. I would rather connect to you softly than clobber you. And the important thing about these messages is that there's no voice tone. When we are activated and our fight or flight response is activated, we have a part of us is already treating our partner like an enemy. And very often our partners will want to apologize or want to change gears and will hear, and I'm sorry, and the first thing we think is, you're just wanting to shut me up. You're not really meaning it. Because we're listening for the 3% of exasperation or ambivalence, which well may be there, but we're not taking in um, the, the more loving message. So I am a very, very big believer, and I've created a book actually called Talk to Me Like I'm Someone You Love, um, Relationship Repair in a Flash, which is a book of over 120 of what I call these relationship flashcards that can change the energy right in the middle of the trenches. And of course, the trick is to remember to use them.
I, I had to laugh for a second, I'm sorry, because um, I was just thinking about, and I don't think my daughter will mind. Um, she has something called a hug towel, and uh, she looks like Casper the ghost. Uh, and so when we're upset with each other, uh, she'll come out uh, with this towel over her head, and she looks like Casper, like I said, and it melts me. So as soon as I see that, everything is, you know, we, yeah, yeah, a little hug towel. She's so adorable, yeah. <laughs> One of the things that you know I, I work with, uh, especially with a lot of guys who are coming to me and you know dealing with relationship issues, and, and a lot of times they're the ones reporting to the anger. And I, I, I like what you're saying, and, and you know definitely things that they can use to you know reduce what's going on. But one of the things I also have them do, and kind of what you were mentioning of, of, you know, having them leave the situation, but when they leave the situation to, as calmly as possible in, in that, announce what they're doing so that they can let their partner know, we're not in a good space right now. I'm going to leave for a moment and have us calm down or even give a specific time, you know, so to say, you know, I'm going to walk away from this, but I do want us to finish this. Can we do it, you know, maybe an hour from now, but actually name a time. Can, can we do this and see if the other, you know, agrees? And in this way, what we find a lot of times, you know, if somebody walks away, the other then feels diminished and unheard and, you know, are we just going to ignore this? You know, so at least we're announcing our intentions and hopefully the other one can hear that yes, we're, I'm not just walking away and we're gonna drop this, but we will come back to this, but let's see what we can do. So if you're watching and you find that you keep getting into arguments with your partner, you've heard some pretty good advice here. Take a time out if that's what you need to do. But if it's at all possible, learn how to deal with the fight in the moment so that you guys can regulate each other and get on to happier territory. listening to this episode with Chris Shea. Learn more about Chris Shea by visiting his website, www.lifesjourneyblog.com.